No holding back, no stepping stones, no broken promises, no busy tones. Just what it takes, just make believe. No one belongs to anything. I've seen the lies, I've seen the Good morning, lies. everybody. It's the lead live from the Peterson Health Digital Studio at Pine Plow Brewing Company. I'm Lewis Amistoy. It is Wednesday, April 3rd, 2024. We are five days out from the Great Eclipse 2024. Jeremy Walter is uh, blowing my phone up this morning. I don't know if he's in this facility and I haven't looked for him yet, but he's he's doubting the 150,000 number. Uh and, you know, he might be right. He may be right. He's really smart. He's small and compact. He's able to get into places that I can't always see. He's younger than I am. So, yeah, he's, he's something else. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's fired up. He doesn't think it's going to be possible. $150,000. I just said the 10 freeway, dude. Thanks to all our sponsors this morning. Good to have all of you here. The Greg A. Richards Attorney of Law, Kerbal Convention and Visitors Bureau, and our good friends at Napa Auto Parts, Kirk County Aftrick and Tile Company, Texas Country Advisors, and In of the Hills. They are here for you. And also, don't forget, we're live from Pine Plow this morning. Don't forget to visit Ken's Topol Ford for all your service needs. Make an appointment today. Or stop on by. They'll take care of you. They'll help you out. They're there for you with their mobile service van over at Quick Lane at Ken Stoppel Ford. They are always ready to help you as much as possible. Don't forget to visit them today. Give them a call at 830-257-5557 for all of your needs at Quick Lane. All right, everybody. Welcome to The Lead Live. Don't forget to subscribe to The Lead. We are available for your subscription now. And uh, they are they're available for uh, ten bucks a month. We're a, we're a steal at ten dollars a month, and we appreciate all of you for being here with that. All right, uh, <laughs> let me get to news and notes this morning. Andrew Gay, Texas Country Advisors, is getting ready to join us. Uh, Andrew, how are you this morning? I'm good, Lewis. Good morning. Uh, let me throw my eclipse, my eclipse, my cool eclipse uh, graphic on. There it is. We got it all ready for you. So, uh, five days out from the eclipse, everybody. I just saw some news that the map is changed. The map has changed uh, a little bit. So, I guess the I don't know. I, I guess the orbit changed. I don't know how that works exactly. Well, we'll have NASA. will be on site at some point. We'll we'll get them to explain that to us. Uh, good morning to Maggie. Good morning to Delane. Good morning to Jill. Uh, the path of totality is still on target to hit us here in Kerr County, and um, we're gonna have. It's gonna be dark. Uh, and, and you know, and really, if you look at this new map, I'm I'm looking at it. Uh, the the totality is gonna go right over the the line, the center line is going to go right over well th if you're if you're the hill country arts foundation it's going to be really really good if you're at fancy finch tea cottage which you know we did a story on a while back they're directly in the path of totality like there's like the center line of totality so ingram and if you're at tom you know so you, tom moore high school is closed um but literally if you were standing on their new softball field that's where that's where the most impact would be the full 427 or four minutes 25 seconds of totality that's the center line is is home plate at the new ingram stadium uh softball facility and in of the and and the hill country arts foundation and the stonehenge thing uh buckhorn ranch in kerrville also in straight directly in the pa path of totality i mean they're like going to have a the probably one of the best spots around and, and here's where the challenge gets into is that you think about this, right? Uh, this is what I said about the freeway. This is what concerns me is that that off ramp uh, where it's, it's uh, rural to market road or farm to market road, 1338, right there on the, uh, the 10, 
that's the Goat Creek Cutoff Road. That's in the total path of totality. So uh, anyway, yeah. So that's going to be so th- it's going to cross over the ten right there, right? That's going to be the darkest part of the uh, of the deal. Uh, Andrew, are you excited about this thing, or what? What do you feel? What, how are you feeling about it? Yeah, I was just thinking. I, I was wondering why you were talking about all this. If I'm the only person that has gotten up every morning this week and kind of thought about uh, the weekend and, and yeah. what's ahead, and and I'm kind of uh, giddy about it like a little kid. I think yeah. it's it, it's we won the celestial lottery. Yeah, we're able to see this thing in our backyard. Yeah, um, and, and like you're talking about, the center line goes right through Kerr County. So um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I think it's not necessarily a once in a lifetime event to see a total solar eclipse but mm-hmm. i think for it to for us to be in our be able to walk out into our backyard and, and have that path of totality move right over us i think that is a very special event right. so yeah i'm i'm really excited are you all stocked up and ready to go you got toilet um, paper food water i'm not sure i don't know yet dungeon, I, I, i'm dungeon gonna and barricade i gotta go do it because i gotta i got i got my friends coming out so let me see this be the larger map here of this thing um, see if I can get it on to the. Uh, let me get. Let me, let's see if I can get this thing so people can see it and Andrew can see it. Um, it's pretty interesting though. Like what the. Uh, let me see if I can add this here. Da, da, da. Screen capture. Though. Um, let me see here. Let me find. My screen. Did you watch the little blurb that Morgan did on the Today Show? I did. Uh, it was really well done. You know, and it was. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, it was. Let me see here. Okay. All right, here we go, Andrew. Um, let me go live with this. Let me see. Let me change it so you can see it. Um, yeah, yeah. See. Morgan Chesky's piece was really well done, and I really enjoyed it. And I, they gave him six minutes, which is incredible. Yeah. So, and I loved how he was, uh, you know, very uh, prideful about being from here. Right. And, uh, just yeah, it was it was great. Right. I thought it was good. Okay, can you see that map? Can you see that map? Okay. Yeah, I can. Okay, so here's the deal, folks. You see, this is going to go from south to north, right? And here in the center line, right, is the totality, the most, where your totality is the most. So they have a little dot on Fredericksburg. That means it'll be the duration's uh, 267 seconds. Um, So a little over four minutes, right? Uh, over here on the border, uh, just south of Del Rio, you have um, 269, right? Okay, so in the orange lines here that you're seeing, those are the areas. Those are the areas where you're going to catch part of it. So if you can look over here to San Antonio, let's, let's zoom in a little bit. Here's San Antonio, right? And they're so only part. They're only partly. Uh, so let me see here. So. They're going to only get, like, if you're, like, insurers, you're not going to really see it. But if you're over in Bernie, you will see it, right? So if we look now into Kerr County, right, let me start, let me drill down a little bit more. So we're here in, uh, we're, we're here in, uh, in, in Kerr County, right? Here's the center line, right? The center line is going uh, across, let me get this, go on through here. So here's the center line, right, as it comes into Kerr County. It's going to pass directly over, uh, you know, so y- if you're at the, if you're camped at the Hill Country Arts Foundation, there's 2,300 people there, uh, at least 2,300 people there, right? You're going to get the full experience. Now, Ingram Independent School District is closed. Tom Moore High School is closed. But I can tell you right now that that, that totality is going to pass right over the top of basically the set over over the new softball field, which I don't know if you can, can you, I don't know if you can see my mouse or not here, my little finger, wow. and, th- and it's going to pass over there. It's going to pass through Ingram, right? Ingram's going to really be ground zero. If you're at the Fancy Finch, uh, uh, Fancy Finch uh, uh, Tea Cottage, you're going to have a, a great view of this. It continues to go north, right? And then here's where I, I think there might be an issue as I, as I, as I move this up, as we take a tour through uh, Curry County. 
Here is Buckhorn Ranch, right? It goes right over the top of that Buckhorn Lake Resort, that RV park that's on the north side of Interstate 10. And look at this. It, the totality is at its greatest really along Goat Creek Road, uh, FM 1338, I think is what it is. Um, and so that off-ramp, my concern always is the freeway, you know? So, uh, you know, what's going to be like on the freeway, you know, as it comes across there? So that's something there. And then it continues to go north again, right? Now, if you're at Cafe at the Ridge, one of my favorite places to have a meal here in Kerr County, uh, there, there's, the to there's the line of totality, and then there's Cafe at the Ridge down here. So that's what we're looking at, Ran Andrew. Uh, mm. You know, you're looking at a pretty, pretty solid map. Now, for some areas, it changed. So, so I guess that's, that's, that's the deal. So Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, man. Great, great breakdown. I yeah. think, uh, you know, be just, I, I think that even if we're in Kerrville, right, we're not too far off that center line. Yeah. I'm sure we're going to get yeah. four minutes and right. whatever it is, um, that, and, and I'm curious about like, to your point, I'm curious if people on the fringes of the totality, uh, line, if they'll be able to like inside your the borders, not the middle line, but inside the the outer lines. Yeah. I wonder if that symbolizes it's still going to get dark, just not for as long. Well, yeah. I mean, I think Does anything right? anything in there is going to be dark. Obviously, you know, it's just okay. going to be it's just going to be a shorter degree, I think, of or time. Like you know, like ten seconds. You know, maybe you might see a difference. I guess. But yeah, if we go back to that map, let me go back. Why is this always changing? I'm it's ridiculous. Why is it make a path of totality? Let me see. Is that back on that? Anyway, oh, here it is. Let me see. All right, we go back to this. Leslie is in the house. She's fired up. Uh, I think she's angry at me. I don't know why. Uh, she says Eagle Eagle Pass is the is the 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 place where it comes in at. Let's see here. Let's see. That means the people in the casino is going to have some good luck, or. Uh, that'd be it. Where that'd is be Eagle Pass? Is it? Here see. it is. Here, here it is. Yeah. So Eagle Pass, it comes in through there, but this is where the line is right here. And so this is where the marker says, two sixty nine, somewhere north of Eagle Pass. So, uh, or northwest of Eagle Pass. So that's where it's going to go. And then it, it's going to then. So if you get, if you pull out here, right across Texas, so you see the line of totality. See, this is the challenge. See over here, this is the problem right here, Andrew. Houston. Now, if you live in Houston, you want to see this thing. Do you go up here to Dallas, right? Do you go to Waco? No. Or do you just take? I would just hit I ten. I mean, I think that's right. the the common idea. Right. I would that's, hate to drive. That's the problem. You know, <laughs> I mean, if you really want the experience and you know that you're going to enjoy it, um, you're going to go. You're going to go to. You're going to go to Curve. I mean, look at that. It's straight across. Whoop. You know, and then. Uh, now, and this is the other, so then it moves, then it moves northwest through, uh, directly over my, now my brother, I have a younger brother, uh, who is going to Indianapolis cause that's where his wife is from. It's also March madness weekend. The final four, the championship game is on, is on, uh, the final four is this weekend and, and her, my, my sister-in-law's, uh, team is Purdue cause she went to school there. I thought she went to Notre Dame, but I guess she went to Purdue. But anyway, um, so they're they're going to Indianapolis to see it. But look at this. I mean, Cleveland's going to get it. Uh, Buffalo's going to get it. And then it's going to go up into into New Brunswick and all these other places. And so yeah, there you go. That's that's the deal. But let me see. Indianapolis uh, totality. Hey, I got a question for you. Yeah. What do you, have you noticed any uh, increase in traffic or anything around town while you've been running and going? Well, look, I notice the increase in traffic all the time because people are just terrible drivers, Andrew. You know that. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't even have the map up there. So, oh, look at this guy. Here he is. Come on in. Oh, look at this guy. Chief McCall is here. He's a very impressive. You don't have to put headphones on because. Hey, well, uh, why don't you let me do the stuff okay. about the economy and then do I'll get it, out of do here. Do it. All right. Right. Uh, all right, sorry. The chief has just stormed onto the show. I'm I'm intimidated now. Uh, all right, Andrew, go ahead. That's awful. Fire it up. Yeah. Uh, so Andrew Gay here, independent financial advisor with Texas Hill Country Advisors. We offer securities and investment advisory services through Next Financial Group, member Finra, SIPC, 
So I just had a couple mentions for us this morning. We closed out the first quarter of 2024 on a positive note. The S&P notched around a 10% gain uh, for the for first quarter of this year. That was its best first quarter performance since 2019. Uh, the story is that that's starting to fade a little bit as we get into the second quarter here. Uh, markets have across the board started to slump a little bit. And it, that is mainly because I talk about this all the time, but that's mainly because the market's expectations are finally coming in line with the idea that maybe the Fed is not going to cut interest rates by this summer. Uh, so as that expectation moves, uh, markets have to adjust their, their pricing accordingly. So according to the Fed Watch tool, the CME Group Fed Watch tool, uh, we're at about a 50-50 split now on, uh, on the market's expectations about whether or not the Fed is going to raise at their June meeting. And before, just, you know, closer to the beginning of this year, we were up in the 80, 90 percent range that they were going to cut in June. So that that expectation has, has definitely uh, been muted, has become more muted over the last few weeks. And as we get into the first week here, the first trading week of, of the second quarter, um, it's looking like markets are finally uh, trying to adjust some of their pricing. But this is it's kind of a a, a situation where the market was expecting one thing or saying one thing about expectations around interest rate cuts. And then the Fed has been saying something different for a while now. So there's a little bit of a disconnect there. And those those two things are finally coming closer to alignment. And therefore, to adjust for that new expectation, the markets kind of have to adjust. In other words, sell off a little bit, um, give back maybe some of their gains they got in the first quarter um to to adjust for that so so far this week uh we're only into the third trading day but the s p is trading uh down about two tenths of a percent right above the 5200 level uh the dow jones is still holding on to just shy of a five percent gain year to date uh trading just above 39,200. but as as these market uh as these uh market indexes have come uh close to all-time highs here recently, hit all-time highs, and then and now I've backed off a little bit. The Dow Jones is in striking distance of, of 40,000. So um, anyway, that's that's uh, what's going on in the markets. I think that we will continue to see this narrative play out where that disconnect between what expectations the market has around interest rate cuts and what the Fed is saying come closer into alignment. Um, that's probably a good thing. And I think markets will probably see markets give up some more gains uh, uh, to to kind of get their their head screwed on straight as far as what the the Fed is expecting to do with interest rates. Right. Uh, good stuff, Andrew. As always, appreciate it very much. You want to stick around for this call? You want to have? You have questions of the chief? Come on, Andrew. No, I'm good. I, I need to run. I got I got a good bit of stuff on my schedule. We're trying to knock everything out we can this week. We are not planning on being open Monday. Um, so you know the markets are open, but we're able to work from home and run our practice. Uh, virtually if we need to. So we're still able to serve our clients, uh, even though we'll probably be at home Monday. So uh, uh, preparing for that. Yes. Okay. All right. I got you. We got you. So, uh, Andrew, right, guys. We'll, we'll see you on Friday. Have All a good right. one. Thanks, Andrew. Sounds good. Y'all have a good uh, show. The chief is here. Uh, how are you, Chief? Doing well. How are you, Lewis? I'm doing all right. Uh, let me get this traffic plan up for you. I, I got. I, let me let me let me get it. Let me get it up to, for you. So, do you have the interactive one? Uh, I have I have the PDF. Do, is there an interactive map? Let me see. Uh, got an email? Yeah. Email too. Yeah, Lewis dot at Kerr County Lead dot com. I do have the bullet point ones. Let me see here. No, we don't want that. We want. Don't want Google Chrome. We want preview. There it is. Okay. So I do have. Um, this is the one I have right now. Is this this critter? So, so that's the that's the top. That, that's your bullet points. Okay, let me see if this one comes to you. This is okay. a little easier to utilize. Okay. And as you uh, scroll through it, scroll it, through it uh, actually brings up the intersection and the. Uh, or the area and the description of what's going on. People are like, for, uh, the, uh, the, to yesterday was interesting. I saw like some some great freakouts for people. Well, what do you for the uh, last uh, few months? And uh, exciting to be here within just a couple of a uh, couple of days. Right. By the way, ignore this. This is from Brenda Hughes. By the way, I can't. <laughs> don't look at it. All right. Try try that. No, I guess we're back <laughs> online. So thank okay. you for our internet. 
uh, being squirrely. All right. A uh, couple big things here that we want to we want to touch upon. This is the traffic safety plan, though. This is the I, I'll get the other one loaded up, but this this really gets you into the details of of what people should be thinking about this weekend. Now, here's the thing. I'm getting some great co- comments from some folks. Uh, Jeremy, who owns this facility, is very skeptical of the 150,000 number. And I told him, I said, look, here's the deal. You know, I once watched a building or a, a power plant get blown up in, in, in Bakersfield, California, and 35,000 people showed up, you know, like on the day. And so that was, that was, uh, that was crazy. And, um, and so I think it's entirely possible. Yeah, I think it's possible. I think, you know, when you say 150,000 people, a lot of people think, oh, Kerrville proper. You know, that that's, that's yeah. a general area. Right. You know, and uh, there, there's a lot of area right. out there. Right. Um, this is the, uh, so this is the overall plan right here. Right. So this is road closures for an effect for just for Monday. And then um, what, is the, what, what, is, what is the biggest question you're getting right now? And let me go to this map right here. This is, this is the bullet points of all the area around Louis Hayes Park. What, what, are, what are you trying to tell people right now? You know, really, uh, especially down in and around uh, the event area at Louis Hayes Park, yeah. uh, it, it's really no different than the, than the 4th of July plan. Right. If you've been down there in and around that area uh, during 4th of July, uh, same type of exit strategy there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, the one change that we made is the... Uh, uh, change of the left-hand turn lane to a contraflow northbound lane, right, starting right, uh, starting right. there at about La Casa. That that's really the only change to that plan down in that area. Uh, everything else there, uh, we were able to carbon copy off of Fourth of July, so it should be very familiar to anyone that's been down there. Uh, and uh, you know, our visitors wh- or guests will uh, will guide them around as well. Right. Okay. I have uh, I have the location of the map here. Let me just. Uh, find another way to get this for you to see. Um, oh, there it is. Okay. So here is the uh, here is the map. Um, what what is the biggest thing that we need to kind of zero in on on this interactive piece? Uh, you know, so uh, as the day goes on, uh, early morning you'll see a lot of the closures in and around uh, in and around Louise Hayes Park. Uh, yeah. We'll close Thompson early because we'll have a lot of foot traffic moving across that roadway. Right. So you'll see those closures happen uh, seven in the morning, ish. <clears throat> we'll also close uh, G Street Bridge at about seven in the morning, right. as well as Francisco Limos Bridge. Want to try to. Uh, maintain some passage for emergency vehicles uh, in that need. Now, I heard a complaint from somebody that says the state hospital people have to work that day. And the, and how are they going to are they going to be able to get to work and say, I work at the hospital. Are they going to be able to do that? Or what's their, are they going to have to go all the way around and come back through uh, the Thompson the Thompson Drive Bridge? What are you going to do there? Yeah, you can either uh, utilize the Thompson Drive Bridge or you can come across uh, Sydney Baker and uh, and utilize Hill Country around past the hospital. That'll get you around the closures there in that immediate right. area uh, down Coley and put you right back on your path. You know, it was interesting uh, yesterday. So, again, the, it, the contra flow thing, this is, this is right here, right? This is what we're talking about. This is the... This yeah. is the, uh, you know, Sydney Baker. So if you're trying to get out of these parking lots uh, to go, it's going to be you're not going to be able to make left hand left hand turns. Correct. It'll all be uh, it'll all be right hand turns, uh, uh, which means you know some folks may have to drive a little out of their way to to head back the direction they want to. Uh, just kind of remind everybody. Uh, what is that? Two, three rights make a left. Yeah, right, so. right, right. <laughs> Just remember how UPS yeah. apparently never makes left-hand turns. Right. So, uh, and then you get into the core of the city, you're going to block left-hand turns on Main Street because uh, you want people to exit out, you know, either down this, you know, down uh, Texas 27 or Texas 16. Right. Um, you know, what do people need <laughs> to know about getting out of town there? Yeah, you know, this is, uh, and that's important to uh, point out, is uh, this traffic plan was all uh, put together with the idea of moving our guests out of the city back to mm-hmm. back to I-10, back towards primarily San Antonio was our thought as mm-hmm. we developed this. Yeah. So for local folks, uh, you know, most of our local folks will know how to get around uh, right. once, they, once they get out of the immediate area. We're really doing a lot of this guidance uh, for our guests. 
to keep them on the right track moving towards I-10 and utilizing as many access points as we can to right. I-10. Right. And so let me just kind of follow this blue lines here. Now, the um, the center lane will be in effect all the way to, t to Holdsworth. Is that right? All the way to Holdsworth. Once, uh, once that center uh, turn lane gets to Holdsworth, it'll be a forced uh, left-hand turn on to Holdsworth. Okay. And, uh, then signage uh, access I-10 via Harper Road. All right. Okay. So then you have, so that's one way to get out. This is the area uh, that I'm thinking about I will set up at, at which is going to be at the CVB, because I kind of want to be able to see, I should be able to see down what this is going to look like on the freeway. Right. Uh, how big of a concern is this for you guys? Yeah, this is uh, this area is a pretty big concern. Uh, we've worked with TxDOT uh, as to what that's going to look like. Uh, we're talking about uh, timing for uh, traffic lights today. You know, we're going to shift all of the lights on Sydney Baker to mm, uh, either okay. a, uh, a flashing red in all directions or a flashing yellow for, for north and southbound traffic right. to continue moving folks through. Do you anticipate having like, you know, officers directing traffic? Is that your, your plan? Yeah, we have. Do you, uh, have, enough, do you have enough white gloves? <laughs> we, we may need some white gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we've uh, we've worked with TxDOT, uh, yeah. and they've contracted about 25 extra police officers for us just for traffic control on 16 right. up into the I-10 corridor uh, to assist us there. Um, and you know, and, and again, the and this isn't really your problem. This is more of a sheriff and a DPS issue. But I was just sharing it earlier. You know, when you look at the path of totality, the center line goes right across the 10 freeway at Buckhorn, the Buckhorn right. uh, Resort. Right. And is there concern about people just parking their cars on the side of the road? And, you know, yeah, I think uh, not just in that area, but I think uh, anywhere along, <coughs> excuse me, anywhere along the, uh, the we interstate. We provide you a warm cup of coffee if you'd like yeah, or, or, you know, or, or, or some water. You know, a uh, warm cup of coffee w would not be good because that stunts your growth. And I'm, <laughs> you know. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, <coughs> yeah, no, I think anywhere along, uh, uh, really any roadway when it comes to time of totality from yeah. uh, from the after action reports we've read that is a huge concern is people just pulling off watching it uh, right and then trying to get started and these it. sort of we don't have as many frontage roads as like other parts but once you get a little further down the road you know there's frontage roads everywhere where people right. can just pull off and and you know i don't know how they're going to police that either right yeah that's that's going to be difficult i know uh i know dps is putting uh, extra troopers out on i-10 uh, through Kerr and Kendall County, mm -hmm. and Text Dot is uh, is also stationing a number of their folks out along I-10 right. to help with that traffic flow as well. There's one uh, back up at that I-10 intersection post uh, post event. There is a possibility uh, we have a plan in place for uh, Text Dot to push a moving roadblock into the outside lane mm. of I-10 eastbound. Uh, to allow traffic coming off of Sydney Baker onto I-10 into the outside lane. Oh, wow, okay. So it doesn't slow that traffic down okay. there. So. Um, yeah, this is one of those issues, too, where, you know, you wish you had a third lane of traffic, you know, heading east. Uh, we have the two lanes, and it's going to be it's going to be crowded. You know, and I think one of the things that I, I've, I've told people, too, and I, they question these estimates. The one that stood out to me from 2017, well, obviously Casper, Wyoming, was... Huge, bombarded yeah. and, yes. and a lot of the cities like Idaho, the big cities in Idaho were hit with huge amounts of traffic. Mm -hmm. But the backups in from South Carolina into Atlanta, mm -hmm. uh, which is one of the largest metropolitan areas in the country, which was hours long. And right. that's something that I think a lot of people were like, oh, what, what, you know, this is a big deal. So, yeah. And, you know, the, the other thing we have to uh, contend with is, you know, we know that Bernie's going to have a lot of folks there. Mm -hmm. We know Fredericksburg will have yeah. a lot of folks there. And uh, a lot of that traffic is going to converge at 87 and I-10 and then uh, yeah. there at, uh, in Bernie. So we know we'll start seeing backups likely there, and then that will just uh, build out to us. Luckily, yeah. we have... You know, quite a number of miles of road <laughs> yeah, between right, here and there right. to utilize. So. Right. Uh, so, I mean, we've done everything we can, basically, at this point. Yeah, you know, we, we put together the best plan we can, uh, just like, uh, you know, in war. You know, when the, yeah. when the first uh, when the first shot sounds, the, the plan uh, kind of falls apart. But right. uh, uh, we're doing the best we can to, to try to mitigate. We know we're not going to solve these problems, uh, but we want to try to mitigate them and 
move uh, move traffic along as quickly as we can. What's your biggest um, concern about you know this this whole thing? I mean, and, and how do you com- I mean you compare it to anything? You know, I always hold up to like you know when the, I remember when the when I was a kid and I never we never went, but I remember the TV the TV coverage of it. When the space shuttle landed at Edwards Air Force Base, man, like thousands of people showed up. I don't know how many people showed up. Maybe two hundred fifty thousand, and and you know just because that, that's so people love the experience right. and they'll drive for it. Right. Yeah. So how does this experience, you know? Like an alien landing in in Roswell was that? We're <laughs> just kidding. Sorry, <laughs> sorry for Mexico. Like, what, what's what's the biggest thing you've had to to, con- to contend with? I, you know, I think uh, up to this point is just uh, just the planning piece and trying mm-hmm. to wrap our minds around um, what this could look like uh, population wise. It's it's very difficult. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm with a lot of people going, yeah, really 152. I, you know, I heard NBC say 250,000 people. Right. I think they, uh, I think they took an average of, of our estimate and the, and the crazy estimate that came out in the Forbes article and, right. and split it down the middle. Yeah. And the Forbes article was basically pulling off of the great, the great, great, Clips. great, great yeah. Eclipse site, which said 500,000, right. Which is really hard to th- sort of fathom. I mean, yeah, you know, that, that was truly just a mathematical equation without taking into consideration real world elements right. and uh, possibility. Right. I mean, the only thing I could say is that they were woefully wrong, uh, on on their predictions for twenty and twenty seventeen in Wyoming, right? Uh, I mean, they were like underestimated it. They yeah. thought one hundred twenty five thousand for the state, and the and the Wyoming Department of Transportation said a million cars came in and out of the state right. during that period, mostly from you know like Colorado and stuff like that. Right. But this one though, my concern still is Houston. I was looking at the map. We were looking at the totality. I guess the totality map changed a little bit. Um, it's shifted a little bit, according to this latest person, another Forbes article. So right. who knows if that's right or not? Right. Forbes. Yeah. But, you know, the you know, it looks like, uh, what is it, just almost up to 410 in San Antonio? Yeah. And then out just past Junction, maybe? Right. Is that still? Yeah. 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 Most of San Antonio, like half of San Antonio will, will get right. some measure of totality. And we, um, we kind of feel like that'll help us a little bit, yeah. you know, that... Uh, that great American eclipse count, uh, really, uh, took into account major metropolitan areas that weren't touched right. uh, by the eclipse at all. And, and quite frankly, you know, if you live on one side of San Antonio, you drive to the other and have lunch, you can watch right. it happen there. I uh, just won't get the, the, the amount of minutes that you will hear. Is there any way we can put a sign up on the freeway that says, if you're an Astros fan, turn around and go home? <laughs> As a Rangers fan, that would be very yeah, tempting. Be, yes, it would be very tempting. <laughs> uh, I- I- exactly. Um, this is, uh, there was interesting, uh, the, the judge uh, put out a burn ban and a, and a, and a no dig ban or no digging right. uh, deal. Right. And a lot of people had a, real, like a really negative reaction to it. Like, oh my God, don't tell me what I can do and not do on my property. Sure. But the theory, the <laughs> again, reason kind of loses out on this deal. Um, what, what's your assessment of that, of why that's important? You know, the, the, the dig band is uh, we don't want to lose any phone lines. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, to, w- w- there may be enough difficulty already if, uh, if we lose uh, or di- have disruptions with cellular service. Mm-hmm. Uh, we want to ensure the hard line service stays in, in place uh, for emergency services and for people to be able to contact us. Right. Uh, the, the ability to move uh, through the county could be imp- impacted greatly mm-hmm. on Monday. And, uh, you know, if... Uh, you had a fire yeah you definitely want uh, those fire guys to be able to get to you absolutely and that's the thing like i don't know if, if you've, you've covered some probably some ruptured gas lines in your sure. career i mean sure. those are awful yeah. to deal with and it takes hours to i mean that's only if you have one of those if something breaks or you rupture something it's not just a like a five minute fix Right. You, then I've yet to redeploy resources to fix that because you know there's gonna be somebody out there who just doesn't know what's going on yeah, yeah. you know uh, how how have the calls been? Uh, did you did, are you making Jack Lamb take all the calls? Uh, you know that's a great idea. Isn't you, it? You should. I think I. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll you tell guys, him you volunteered. I, I know. Uh, but you guys, what what is it going to look like starting 
Thursday, really. What what, what is the, what is the, the deployment situation look like for you guys? Uh, so we uh, we activate uh, our emergency operations center Thursday at noon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we will be setting up most of Thursday, setting that operations center up. Yeah. Uh, our our manpower starts increasing on Thursday, and then each day through the weekend leading up to Monday, we'll see more and more folks on patrol shifts. Okay. Uh, we've shifted. Uh, Pretty much everybody in the building that wears a badge and a gun into uh, into some form of service right. over the weekend and through Monday, definitely on Monday. Uh, if uh, if you uh, are a police officer or well, actually, if you work in our building at all, you're working on Monday. We're, we're going to yeah. So and uh, many through the weekend as and well. And your EOC will be set up where? Where are you going to be? We're going to be stationed at. You're going to be in the EOC yourself, or uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll be in the EOC. Uh, Eric Maloney is uh, Chief Maloney is uh, going to be our incident commander okay. uh, for this, and I'll be his. Uh, Deputy uh, Commander, uh, kind of a unified command. Well, he is older than us, so. Yeah, and uh, the guy knows what he's doing. He Let knows me tell what he's you, doing. That, yeah. uh, he, uh, he has been very impressive uh, preparing this community for this yeah. uh, this event. Uh, he was very impressive during COVID uh, when I very first arrived. Yeah. And uh, he has really taken this by the horns and really right. led us as a, as a city organization to, uh, uh, you know, get prepared and, you uh, let us down the road that we needed to. This is uh, this is right in his wheelhouse. Right. This is what his degree is in. Right. So it was uh, it was very beneficial having having him uh, in the room and uh, kind of giving us guidance on the, these are the things we need to think about. What was about. the biggest event you had to manage in Hobbs, New Mexico? <laughs> Hobbs, New Mexico was more violent crime, really. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, you know, our, our big events were. Uh, for grass fires, you know, uh, yeah. and when you talk about grass fires, you think about a little bit of grass burning. These were miles long, right. burning up to the city limits. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, some of those type of things um, uh, really, really it more revolved around crime and Hobbs and, right. and serious crime. You know, I, it was interesting. Uh, you talking about traffic impact and I was driving, you know, I, I have a part time job in Ingram School District and I was I was leaving. Actually, high school was getting out and I was like. Okay, there's like 400 kids in the school, and the traffic's ridiculous here, you know, because they gotta stop traffic to like get get, get moved. It's like James Avery, you know, you get kids moving out. It just reminds you that just the smallest level of event can be challenging at times, like a big sporting event when they lay people out, you know. Right. Um, so you know that's 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 something a lot of big cities are used to, but we're not maybe so used to here. Yeah, we're not used to it here. We really don't uh, have the road infrastructure in place mm-hmm. to to support that type of traffic. I think that's really uh, the big concern uh, post event. You know, I think leading up, we're going to feel. I think we can already feel a little bit of uh, increase in traffic on the roads this week. Uh, uh, most of the after action reports we we read said yeah expect about seven days before to start seeing the the increase that will increase daily up until the day of event so yeah we're, yeah we're was, seeing that. I went out yesterday to had to I had to run out to the middle school yesterday and I usually take a back way to get there right uh, from where, I, where my house is at but I got stuck in some weird level of traffic at five o'clock in the afternoon. And I was like, what the heck, man? I mean, what, it's weird how curved. My mother noticed this, too, when she was here because she's always complaining about traffic. <laughs> There's a lot of traffic in your town. I'm like, Mom, you're from Southern California. Zip it. You know, what do you know? And um, But there, she's right. Sometimes it's a little, Sydney Baker gets a little backed up, especially on the police station, you know, in that, that general area. So Yeah, there's about a three-block uh, three area right there that really, uh, certain times of the day, it, it really backs up on a normal day. So, right. uh, I, you know, it's, it's going to be challenging uh, right. over the next few days. Right. Uh, it, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how this works out. And you know, and all indicators are that I that I've we've had I've talked to both the Hill Country Arts Foundation and Shriner. Like the Hill Country Arts Foundation has kids as a school tour coming in from South Africa. Right. They have people from Finland, England, Germany, uh, all over the all over the U.S. are coming to stay. You know, there and Shriners are experiencing the same thing with some of the groups that are coming there. So the indicators are that we're, we'll see people. Yeah, people will be here. I, I think I think we're already starting to see that. I've I've uh, you know talked to many folks uh, that have had interactions with people from uh, from other countries. I, uh, last night at dinner, uh, interacted with two folks uh, from Germany, I believe. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. People from South Korea uh, are here currently. Right. 
Uh, we see, uh, uh, you know, we see tour companies that are contacting us that are bringing folks to Louise Hayes Park from Denmark, from, you know, uh, many places. Uh, we need to see world. if we can get some of those Koreans to stick around and open like a, like a Korean barbecue restaurant. You know? <laughs> All right. Those are good. Uh, the, the, the one unknown remains the weather. Right. Um, the National Weather Service is constantly is, is starting to message around the weather. A lot of people look at those weather apps, you know, like, oh, there's like a 71% chance of rain. Well, now it's like 30. Right. Partly sunny conditions, so we could see we could see some some we could see some 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 good weather possibly. It's still going to be warm. It's going to be like eighty degrees. Well, you know, it's funny. That's my uh, that's my next solar eclipse meeting here in about thirty five forty five minutes. Is okay. uh, is the National Weather Service uh, a brief for uh, for emergency managers in the in the area, and uh, they're they're quick to remind us uh, as they give uh, information that this is going to change. This right. will continue to change. Um, um, let me see here. There, here's the latest. There's the latest discussion. Let me see if I can. Uh, this is generally bad news for stargazers or um, eclipse watchers. However, the the punch uh, strength of the Sunday Pacific front remains in question, and another low twenty to forty percent chance of thunderstorms for daytime Monday might suggest the opportunity for some downward drafts uh, current to temporarily break out, th- whatever the hell that means. I can't, <laughs> these things are hard to read. Uh, but so there's like, yeah, this could be cloudy, could be, but here's the other part of this. And I said to people too, it's like, look, it's still going to get dark. Yeah, absolutely. You yeah. know, and, and when they say cloudy, there's there's two different types of uh, clouds that they're, yeah. they're watching. The high-level right. clouds, mm-hmm. low-level. Low-level is really what you don't want to see. Yeah. Uh, that'll really obscure. The high-level clouds, uh, you'll still be able to have visibility. Uh, yeah. With that low building out over the southwest U.S., uh, we, we know we'll have some high-level uh, clouds. Uh, we're just, uh, they're just waiting to see how that front does yeah. uh, coming through on Sunday. Yeah. And what it does for uh, us. The push of dry air is forecast to hang up over the coastal prairies, and a resurgence of low clouds are a good bet to reach back into the whole country for Monday morning. Yeah. So that's a, that's that's not a good that's not a good forecast necessarily for us who are going to watch it. Yeah. But you know, by one thirty, you know, one twenty seven, whenever it starts, you know, the full the full totality starts, and might you know, it's going to be like I said, no matter what, it's going to get dark. And that's going to be spectacular. Absolutely. Have you ever experienced a full eclipse? No, I have not. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't either. So, uh, I mean, the annular eclipse was cool enough. Yeah. You know, that was that was pretty memorable. Yep. Uh, this is going to be really remarkable, though. It just, really is. Just just the fact that it's going to be so dark at one one thirty in the afternoon, and then boop, right back to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, oh, and you think about the next one uh, across the continental United States is twenty forty four or something like yeah. that. Uh, yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, we might be. We might not be here. We, pretty we, pretty remarkable it, that we it, live in a location that we could see I, two in six months. I know. It's great. <laughs> yeah. It's a, it's absolutely incredible. The uh, let me talk to you about crime for a second because there's this there's this we we, we I looked at the FBI data when it was first released. And tr- crime was like maybe up slightly, but still down from where it had been previously. Where where are we at with the crime stats? Because I think the FBI released a more comprehensive number uh, just this earlier, I think last week maybe. But where where do we stand with with uh, the crime rate here in Kerr, in Kerrville and Kerr County? You know, overall we uh, we stay fairly flat boy I hate saying that out loud you yeah know, when you start talking statistics uh, they, they can bite you real quick yeah we stay uh we stay fairly uh level you know we'll see occasional spikes uh or uh you know over a weekend you know see like a crime spree from uh one or two folks that are that are connected i uh, usually uh we're able to identify those folks and and get them arrested and uh, uh that's a good thing that we don't continue to have uh continue to have them out there uh, uh, wreaking havoc in our community. Right. Uh, we're, we're able to get them identified quickly and, and in part due to uh, to the citizens in our community and the involvement they're willing to take in their uh, in their own safety. Right. And that's right. Uh, that's important for a community. Exactly. And, and I think that uh, I mean, I, I feel really safe here in this town. I mean, I, I feel I feel like this town is probably like I don't know. Some people like I hear like, oh, there's so much crime here. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? So yeah, I, you know, I think uh, oh, I hate to say that. I, th- yeah. I think it's so rare. I, I won't say so rare. I think it's uh, 
rare enough that when something does happen, it really catches everyone's attention. Right. Uh, where in other communities, those things uh, uh, may not even uh, hit their radar because right. of the level of other crime that they have. So Right. Yeah. I mean, you were in Hobbs. They had some yeah. serious crime there. We, so We did. And, uh, you know, this is a, this is a much different place. And uh, it is uh, it is very much a blessing to work in a community where the people who live here are just as uh, uh, invested in their safety as the police department and uh, such great partners in everything that right. we do. Uh, I just got a photo from a friend of mine who said, this is, and here's, you can see it here on the screen. This is a live uh, recent photo. This is today at the HEB and people are in line, you know, buying stuff ahead of the weekend. But wait a minute, you know, let me look at this photo more closely for a second here. Okay. This guy is only buying chips. So I don't know what he's in line for. You, you're in line to buy chips? I mean, you're only two back. It's not even full. <laughs> so uh, I was in H-E-B last night. Yeah. And uh, I can tell you why that's the only thing he's got in that basket. That's all there. <laughs> uh, yeah. They, you know, they, uh, I know they have plans uh, to have extra deliveries. Right. Uh, you know, we talked with them well in advance. I know they have plans in place. Uh, I think we're seeing a lot of folks uh, doing what we what we uh, had uh, said is you know make sure you do your your shopping yeah. early avoid and uh, you know when you when you run a, a store on a point of sell order and when you have those type of spikes it's it's difficult to keep up so. right right there there's some people here that this guy's got like two things in his basket. Come on, film, film up, people. <laughs> oh, no. yeah. Get what you need. Get what you and, need and get uh, out of there. Yeah, there's no sense in yeah, uh, in creating the you know the hoarding thing. I was so. gonna go last night and I and I decided not to. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, I didn't even go check on the toilet paper. You know, that, right? That, uh, the, the I hope we all learned the, our lesson. The toilet COVID. paper is out, okay. of, out of out of hand. Yeah. Um, the how is how is retention going? How is how is How's that working out? You know, we're uh, we're doing pretty well. We uh, we have uh, several folks in the academy right now. Several folks out in field training. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, great folks out on the street uh, to train those people. Uh, we're we're sitting in a in a pretty good place right now. Uh, do you worry? Uh, I mean, it's always been a worry. It's always been a, a challenge. But what do you, what is your sense of things as far as you know, continually recruiting people? I mean, do you feel pretty good about it? Yeah, you know, I think that's, uh, I think that is really the uh, environment, uh, uh, law enforcement, well, I, I think probably all society right. is in is, uh, is a constant recruit and, uh, and higher posture just to maintain. Uh, we really see, I just saw a, uh, a uh, illustration on, uh, on social media the other day there was a study in regards to someone's salary who job hopped the first 10 right. years of their career as compared right. to someone who stayed where they were. Uh, it was kind of some interesting information. It is uh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, by the way, you, you, the critical employee for your department, her name is Charvy Torque. Man, you are not kidding. <laughs> uh, how, how much is how much how much work is she gonna have to do? Is she gonna be allowed to even leave? Uh, I think we're going to uh, set up a uh, a place for her to live within live. the new building, right? Uh, we, and that was very important as a part of the part of the public safety facility. Uh, you know, we identified early on that uh, we're huge users of of uh, Charvy's IT department and uh, and what she does every day. And having her within that building, uh, where she does seventy-five percent of the work between the three departments that are in there, yeah, uh, is is going to be phenomenal. I think it'll improve the efficiency of the operation, right? And uh, we might even let her go home and, and sleep just a little because bit. Because the tech challenges. I mean, you're always going to have people who are. Th this is the thing about Charvy. You're always going to have people who are within your department who are tech savvy, right? But there's people who are like Charvy who are network savvy, who are full system savvy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I said, you know, she's made it clear before, like most of my, my support goes to the PD and to the fire department because you guys have become so technologically reliant on, on you know, GPS and, and all the real-time data that you guys collect. Right. Uh, so she plays a critical role and that made it clear like she needed to have a home w where she could easily access you know 
be available to you guys. So yeah. now here's the rumor. Here's the thing, right? I'm going to I'm going to I'm going I'm I'm to if you don't come at me, all right? I'm just saying <laughs> I, I have a picture of her and I thought I had it in my system, but I don't. I had a picture of her Stand next to Mike Whitler. Is that a problem? You know, <laughs> Whitler over at, at K-Pub, I mean, you know, keep keep your mitts off of her, right? Right, yeah. right. Yeah, so. absolutely. Yeah, you know, you, uh, Charby's important to us. I mean, mm-hmm. you think about you think about me sitting right here mm-hmm. and the technology that I have, yeah, I have right. three items right yeah. here before, right. really right here on my person that, that she would touch in some way right. to support. Right. So, and that's that's not even including the technology in the vehicles, in the building, in dispatch, uh, it goes pretty deep. I want to tell a story real quick about you and your wife. Are Uh-oh. you ready for this? Oh, okay. So we had I was at Shriner at Trailhead, uh, and that was uh, was that for Hosty? What was that? You were there for Hosty. It was for Hosty. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. Yes, the, and the, there was a gentleman there that had a little issue, and he fell over on his bike. And I came. I was in my car, getting ready to go out, and I see this guy falling over on his bike and uh and all of a sudden this woman appears out of nowhere and she knew what she was doing and i was just like you know i'm just gonna walk away that was your wife yeah <laughs> she's, she's a nurse practitioner right she is yeah she she kind of knows what she's doing she yeah. was uh before she was a nurse practitioner she was a uh flight nurse uh so wow or drs or cardiac uh, intensive care yeah she, she has a little bit of history there right i mean <laughs> she just kind of took control of the situation and i was like oh thank god yeah you know, and, uh, you know, it was one of those things where and you, then you came over and I, I was like, well, who's this woman? And then you came over and like, oh, oh, that's that's the chief's wife. This yeah. makes sense now. And I was like, oh, she's a nurse. Right. And uh, is that a frequent issue? Like the two of you have to be <laughs> somewhere <laughs> providing medical aid? Uh, not frequently, thank heavens. Right. But yeah, it, it's it's happened a number of times that, yeah. uh, that she's... Uh, I've turned around and I don't know. She's doing chest compressions on somebody laid out in the market at, right. in San Antonio. Uh, 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 so it's uh, it's happened a few times. Right, and then you just kind of you kind of just stand over and look official. I just look official, make you the call. Look official. I do, I do the things that uh, cops do. You know, we, right. we call the people that know what they're doing. Right. <laughs> uh, that was an interesting. That was very. It was very because I was there. There was another. I I don't know kid that was from Shriner that was there. Interesting story about that young man. Yeah. Uh, didn't know who he was. Uh, I, I had actually met his father before. Mm-hmm. Uh, he uh, and I just saw him last week at a conference in Galveston. I said, "Hey," I, he said, "I think my son met you," mm-hmm. uh, and it was that incident. That was the young man. Really? Okay. And, uh, you know, seven degrees of separation kind of That's shrank rapidly. Yeah, because that kid uh, came out of his car and he yeah. walked over. He hurried over, yeah. like I did, and uh, um, but he he immediately called campus security so i think he must be a student or yeah. you know and he called campus security they came over and you know and then you got there and so it was it was an interesting an interesting to watch the process of that so uh, it was funny talking with his father he you know the, the young man has a very big interest in uh in public safety mm-hmm. but his dad said no he's there for engineering he's there for engineering <laughs> right well, you know uh, what? So There's something to be said about a guy who could do, you know, in, in engineering, yeah. you know, stuff. I mean, when you, when you look at some of these things, though, like, you know, the police have to deal with right. on a regular basis. It's just it's just incredible. Absolutely incredible. What what is the what is the what, what remains your biggest worry about law enforcement in the future? You know, I think uh, for law enforcement in the future is uh, is really we kind of touched on it earlier is is finding the right people. Uh, to create uh, kind of a legacy within a department to mm-hmm. keep you know culture alive, to keep uh, uh, the ability to respond and know a community. It takes a while to learn a community when right. you're in law enforcement, right. and, and the trend right now in law enforcement is is rapid turn from one department to another right. across the U.S. So you really lose a lot of that yeah. uh, experience and experience with the community, and uh, that that's really my concern. That's the that's, uh, that is a huge one because yeah. you got so many. Like I, I remember driving. I, I remember texting Jack this uh, Jack Lamb. I was driving through Arizona, and they were like. Uh, you know, fifty thousand dollar bonus if you sign on retention bonus. Yeah. 
uh, I think my hometown in California is offering like 60,000, yeah. you know? So like it, it's conditional obviously, but I mean, yeah. still it's, a, it's, it's, that's the idea. I, I was doing that, uh, in a Hobbs in, uh, 2012, 2013. In fact, we wow. went out to California and uh, did recruiting, uh, again, small world. Uh, we recruited several folks from, uh, uh, Alan Hancock College, College and, yeah, and, and, yeah. Uh, and Santa Maria. Assist, uh, assistant yeah. Chief Haley was not happy with me when he got here. He said, hey, I know who you are. <laughs> you recruited some guys I was trying to hire. Yeah. <laughs> that Haley guy, yeah. he's something else. Uh, what a good hire on that part. Oh, oh, yeah, what a blessing to the community. Isn't wow. it amazing? Like, you find these guys that just show up, and he's like, you yeah. know, I mean, he's like, he was a chief once, and yeah. then they, they sucked him back in, you yeah. know, a second time. Like, he's, yeah. he's done it all. Yes, yeah. Chief uh, of police for 10 years. And yeah. A lot of great experience came with him. He's he's very much kind of a reflection of what I see Kerrville as. Right. Is, uh, you get here, and there are uh, folks uh, to a caliber that you're not used to at this concentrated level in a community. Right. Uh, I'm going to find this map again. Where did, it, where did it go? I had it. Now it's gone. Ugh. Let me find it. Uh, here we go. Here's the map. Uh, let me get this map up one more time because I want people to see this map because it's really important. Um, okay. So then this is the traffic plan for everybody. And uh, so you guys can see this. Actually, make sure I have this live so people can actually see it. Okay. There it is. Um, this is, let me, let me, let me go sc scroll back. Okay. Let's go back to Louise Hayes Park, right? So here's going to be the, the festival piece. These are the road closures. Um, so Water Street's going to be closed. Uh, Thompson Drive is going to be closed. Uh, at Park is going to be closed. La Casse is going to be closed. Although you can exit out of those facilities. Like if you're like, a, these are apartments over here on this right. side. You can um, exit out of HEB, uh, and and so basically, there this there's if you're gonna be there, just be know you're gonna make a right hand turn and you have lots of little, little detours. So, uh, and you know, one important thing that I that I haven't mentioned mm -hmm. is uh, if if you are coming down to the event, uh, we are highly recommending that you be there parked uh, and in place by 10 a.m. Right, uh, because it's going to take hours to set up some of uh, some of our traffic control for post event, and that will. Uh, that will start at 10 a.m. Right. Uh, where we're where we're setting up. Now, now, some of what we're looking at here will be set up at 7 a.m. Right. But uh, for the remainder of that traffic plan, uh, 10 a.m. Uh, text dot contractors will start uh, setting up the the uh, traffic control additional traffic control. Right. We saw some of that already today. Uh, some people were asking, like, well, why is there what's going on with uh, some of these these signs everywhere? Again, if you're if you're if you're, if you're going to try to get out of Kerrville. They're going to have, you know, if you're going to go on East Main, for instance, you're going to have some tr trouble getting out of there because they're going to have road closures or, or local traffic only, right? Right. Yeah. You know, we, we want to be able to allow the, the residents in and out of those areas. Yeah. Obviously, if you live in and out of those areas, uh, drive right past that sign. Right. right. You know, uh, we're really, again, that's really a deterrent to our guests to try to keep them on the main roadways and out of the neighborhoods. Yeah. So you will see significant closures up and around the police department because that's going to where be uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, you know got a lot of guys working a lot of right. folks working that day so right. those will be closed. You're going to see a lot of closures closures on Clay Street, Water Street, um, around the parking garage. Yeah, once the uh, so that's an important piece right there around the parking garage, uh, the Water Street, Clay. That stuff will remain open until the parking garage fills. Uh, yeah, once it fills. Uh, we'll close those roadways. Okay. And then um, as you go out to Interstate 10, I mean, again, they're going to have that contraflow traffic uh, lane, where so you'll have a third lane of traffic to get people out of town quickly if you're headed, you know, northbound on Sydney Baker. Sydney Baker. And then you get to Thompson Drive, and then they, basically if you're in that left turn lane, you're going to be turned, you're going to be directed to Thompson Drive and back Harper Road to get on the freeway. Correct, yes. Uh, there, there's also an event going on there at the sports complex, the, mm -hmm. the park and view. Uh, all of the folks parked there will also be uh, directed out towards Harper Road. Okay. 
All right. Uh, there you go. Chief, thanks for, for stopping by. Hey, you bet. Appreciate it very yeah. much. Cool. Uh, we got to keep Jack busy, though. Oh, he, so. he's going to be busy. He has been busy. He's, he's been working uh, day and night on a lot of the messaging for this. Right. We should, uh, we should have him. We should make him do like, uh, he should be TikTok famous. <laughs> he should yeah. be TikTok famous. <laughs> <laughs> keep, uh, him, uh, keep him busy. All yeah. right. Thanks, Chief. You bet. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here on a, on, on a beautiful Wednesday. Uh, get out there and enjoy the day. It's, it's gorgeous today, and we're going to have more of that as well. All right. Thanks a lot, for everybody. We'll see you guys again tomorrow here on The Lead Live. Have a great rest of your day.